No, it's mine, all mine. Actually, it, it isn't. Uh, we borrowed it for a few hours. These ten bars are worth between about £300,000, or around £300,000. But the interesting thing is that last Friday they were worth £340,000. It's still a huge lot more than Gordon Brown managed uh, when he sold off much of the National Reserve at the lowest price in 20 years. Since then, it's soared in value as a supposed safer place to keep your money. In recent days, people seem to have fallen a bit out of love with it. Why? Joe Lynham's reports. Some people like to live in or drive their wealth. Others, like Datta Pooj from the Maharashtra province in India, like to wear theirs. This garment has a value of $250,000. Well, it was worth that much last week. It might be worth a paltry $220,000 today. Mr Pooj's shirt may appear to be a little bit gauche to you and me, but he's in good company. From Mr T to John McCreerick, Goldie to Lady Gaga's wheelchair, gold has been a potent symbol of public consumption for centuries, even though its practical use is limited. Despite that, gold is always seen as a safe haven, a place to store wealth in the event of economic crises. The price of gold was pretty uneventful in the 15 years up to 2007, hovering around $350 per ounce. But when the shine came off global banks and the European single currency, gold rose by a glistening 250%, reaching an all-time record high of $1,920 in September 2011. But it's been in retreat ever since, and last week a major sell-off began, which continued into this week when it lost 9% on Monday alone, its biggest ever one-day fall. So why has gold taken a cold shower? Well, many people feel that it was overpriced in the first place and needed a correction. Another reason is rising prices or inflation. Gold was always seen as protection against that. But of late, global inflation has been tame. Then there's the optimistic reason. Apart from Europe, the global economy is starting to recover and gold may no longer be needed as much as a safe haven. As for the trigger for the most recent gold sell-off, the Eurozone might be to blame again. An EU report suggested that tiny Cyprus might have to sell some reserves to pay its debts. And while Cyprus's 14 tonnes of bullion are negligible, a potential fire sale of gold in equally troubled but reserve-rich Portugal, Spain or Italy appears to have spooked the markets. Italy with 2,500 tonnes is the world's third largest. I think there are two broad reasons. One is gold went too high in the first place. Um, it was a function of that mad panic of three or four years ago when people thought that the world was coming to an end, there would never be a recovery, uh, there would probably be war, you know, people got out of hand. And the second reason is I think over the last three to four months people have started to realise that actually the world economy is recovering. The conspiracy theorists have, you guessed it, a rival theory for the big sell-off. Rumours have circulated that a massive short bet was placed against gold last week, which forced prices down. If 500 tonnes or 16 million ounces had been sold short, then the gold price fall was artificial and gold could resume its climb upwards. I think it's just a blip because I don't see any factors which affect the fundamentals for owning gold and for its price to keep on rising. The macroeconomy hasn't fixed itself despite the few percentages we keep hearing here and there about GDP or employment. People are still suffering on their, you know, their money in their bank, they still see it being devalued. Currencies are still being debased through quantitative easing and other monetary printing measures. I don't particularly see that the man on the street suddenly thinks, oh great, the economy's fixed and I don't need to start worrying about my money in the bank. So in this era of austerity and cutbacks, perhaps Britain should consider selling off some of its gold reserves. But alas, there's not much left to sell. That's because between 1999 and 2002, the then Chancellor Gordon Brown sold off almost half of Britain's gold reserves at an average price of $275 per ounce. If the government had waited an extra decade, they could have sold off 400 tonnes for seven times that price. Well, it's £2.3 billion was a lot of money back then. Oh, how the current Chancellor could have used £16 billion. 
Sadly, these aren't ours. They're on loan from Bullion by Post. Other firms also supply. The biggest owners of gold bricks are the world's central banks, who've been the largest losers from the gold price fall. It's ironic because it's been the sustained printing of new money, or QE, by central banks, which forced many investors to buy gold in the first place. Well, we're joined now by a true believer in gold, the financial commentator Max Kaiser, and by the gold sceptic Daniel Knowles from The Economist. Are you buying or selling? Oh, I'm a buyer, big buyer, very bullish on gold. I think if you look at the context of the sell-off, it doesn't change the story of gold, and so I'm a buyer. So you, you, that implies you think it will not only recover after the recent drop, but it will carry on going? Absolutely, Jeremy. I think if you look at what happened in the last couple of days, started in Japan, yeah. uh, there was uh, gold reached a 40-year high in yen terms which set alarm bells ringing in central banks around the world because they're trying to manage their currencies against gold and gold is a barometer that tells them that they're doing a bad job. So once gold spiked up in this way, panic bells rang and they went after gold. Sure, uh, but uh, uh, tell, explain this to us. I thought we abandoned the gold standard years ago. Uh, we did. The, I mean, the thing about gold is that it's the only reason it has value is that it always has. Um, people buy it because other people buy it. Um, of course, it has some use as jewellery and so on, but, um, but for the most part, it's, it's a kind of investment that's a, a bet on uh, civilizational collapse. Um, but let's look at that gold standard question for a second, because since 2009, central banks have been buyers of gold uh, for the first time in decades uh, because they don't trust each other. And uh, Cyprus, to get out of their constraints, they're talking about selling their gold. Same thing for Greece. So though there's not a formal gold standard, there is emerging an informal gold standard. And the central banks are saying the only way that we can keep our price parity with these other fiat currencies is by keeping that price of gold down. And we saw that on Friday, 500 tons of it's gold, paper you, gold, you, gold, You would agree, it's just, but look, we've got some over there. Yeah. Uh, we'd never go anywhere without it, but uh, that is just a bit of shiny metal. That's all it is. It uh, Jeremy, no, and I, I, I it has think no I, objective value. Sorry. Yeah. Then, then why are the central banks I just, I think tripping the central over bank themselves thing. to buy, the to buy bank gold? Thing they don't is trust each other. Theory. It is not central no, they've banks. They've been buying it heavily yes, since 2009. It, maybe, you know, Last year, more than ever before. Um, hundreds and hundreds of tons. And I'll tell you, two countries in particular that are interested in gold right now are Russia and China because they see that in the yeah, U.S. Their huge reserve. But the thing is, this, this isn't the story. Like the it's not central banks who have been selling it recently. That's it's right, they're buying it. It's not central it. banks who have been selling it, and therefore this it. price drop is net. They're buying the, the it. The thing that's been pushing gold up, the thing that's been kind of driving gold up, is people, things like exchange-traded funds. People have been seeing the fact that gold's been going up, and they've been buying it as an investment. Because, you know, even buying it as a speculative thing. They, there are all sorts of financial innovation over the last few years which allow you to buy gold in your pension fund or whatever, and all of a sudden people are panicking. And the, the big sell offs over the last few days have been, have been extremely The, 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 the lines gold. outside gold buying shops and all across Asia today are long. People are taking advantage of this discount I mean, meanwhile, and they're running I mean, to buy gold. Meanwhile, private firms are selling it. They're being forced there's, to sell in a lot big, of ways. The hedge great funds big like in price. the Paulson's and fund and the other funds are being forced out by, by, by forced selling through manipulation of futures contracts in many uh, instances. Why is, tell, tell me, why is it a good way uh, of storing wealth? Why do people believe it to be a way of storing well, wealth? Well, it's not very much of it. Um, it's quite easy to carry around. I mean, a, you know, you see... A, block like that that we've got over there is worth several thousand pounds um, and uh, and you can divide it up it's easily measurable I mean historically there are good reasons why why it was used as currency but I just think as a civilization we've kind of moved past that there's still oh. another factor here Jeremy which is that the central banks and the big too big to fail banks don't trust each other that's why they're not lending into this marketplace, because they want to hoard that cash. It, the British government is engaged in quantitative easing, and the banks are simply hoarding that cash. They're not lending it into the marketplace, because they don't trust each other anymore, because they know the balance sheets of these banks, the two big to fail banks here in the UK, are horrible, and they'll probably require another huge bailout. So they're looking to buy gold to hedge themselves against what so, they see as a emerging crisis. Okay. So, it, so it is a bet <laughs> against collapse. It, it's, it's a bit on collapse, in fact. It, it's it's a uh, asset that has no counterparty so risk. All that, these right. banks have counterparty risk. The balance sheets of the two big, of the big four banks yeah. in the UK are highly questionable. Highly questionable what those assets are truly worth. There is something. There is objective fact that we can start feeding in here, isn't there? I mean, if you live in a society in which a bank a bank may be mm. ordered by government not yes. to pay out. 
Yeah. Money that is your money may not be allowed to give it back to you without be implying a surcharge, as has happened in Cyprus, then, of course, gold becomes pretty attractive, doesn't it? If I lived somewhere like Afghanistan in 1979 and I were mm. leaving and, and the Soviet tanks were raiding in, if, if I lived in Germany in 1939, in the then it's I, 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 just, I don't believe that it is happening in, it is happening right in, in Cyprus. Europe. It's happening... It is, I just don't believe this Jeremy, argument that this Europe man is a paper bug. Collapse. He's a paper bug. <laughs> he believes in paper at any cost. Well, he doesn't want to look at the yes. reason. Let's just address this question of the insecurity yeah. that people feel about That's money. Just a, that, that is why gold flow, you know, goes up in times of when people are slightly uh, less trusting of government. Yeah. And, and it is true that in the last few years, you know, in the, in, as the recession's hit, yeah. there are, have been reasons to worry about the state of the financial system, and that's pushed it up. But the thing is, I think we can, we've had five years now, the euro still hasn't collapsed. Right. Um, I think we can yeah. safely say that this is, these have been overblown. Do you understand, though, leaving, leaving the whole, this economic question about banks aside yeah. for a second, what is it about, about gold, the feel of gold, the look of gold, the luster of the stuff that, yes. that appeals so atavistically to us? Gosh, I don't know. Um, it goes, it's a shiny metal. Well, it goes back to Aristotle, <laughs> who, who declared gold is suitable as money because it fulfilled certain characteristics. So it's simply, it, it, it's simply its financial value, it, its transactional value. It's not to do with anything intrinsic to its color or it's well, it is Th this is the amazing yeah. uh, thing, uh, point you hear in debates like this they'll say especially on this network that gold uh, after all has no intrinsic value and yet the very essence of gold is its intrinsic value there's no counterparty it risk it takes people value. it's something that's come out of the ground any more than that's gold in any, in any but that's because they always in any crisis yeah, they'll never say i'm not going to accept gold however they might say i won't accept your british pounds i won't accept your us dollars because that's just paper that says it's backed by the government the, and that government's in crisis that they will take gold it yes, has value but that is not because it has intrinsic value it is because they it's believe rare. it has it, value it, it is intrinsic value in that it has rarity it has scarcity it is fungible it has all these properties and value make it suitable that for the money. People, there's people there's, there's value value supply. socially constructed value, well, as any currency is. I mean, but all, all it has British is the weight pound, of history. Here's a British pound. Its value is being debased every single day. When Mark Carney comes oh, hang in, on, hang on. the British pound, pound has got a lot more valuable relative to gold in the last few days. <laughs> Is that, your, your price, is, is that why prices are up 8% no, in the last year? No, that's just it. All right, you two, that's it. That's it, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. There's obviously something in the water tonight, and what it is. Anyway, thank you all very much, or both of you. It seems like about 12, but thank you both very much.